Well, good morning. Here we are, January 16th. Uh, today we finish up our study in Ezekiel. And we're looking at Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14. And the title is Offers. Offers. God brings life to his people. Uh, as we begin our study here, uh, the first part of the lesson is potential, the potential. And this is verses uh, 1 through 6 of Ezekiel 37. It says, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many of them on the surface of the valley, and they were very dry. Then he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I replied, Lord God, only you know. Four through six. He said to me, Prophesy concerning these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you, and you will live. I will put tendons on you, make flesh grow on you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you so that you come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This, uh, this uh, passage here is one of the most known in Ezekiel, the dry bones, the valley of the dry bones. And basically what I gather is that as God is giving uh, Ezekiel a vision, uh, he's looking toward the future. Uh, he's looking at the present and then as we get into the lesson, into the future. But he's talking about, he, he puts him, he, God puts him in a vision and sets him in the middle of this valley and there are bones everywhere, uh, some connected, some disconnected, and they're all bleached. It says very dry, so there's no doubt that these bones are old and that there's nothing living in them. Uh, the, they're, not, they're not alive. But God tells uh, Ezekiel, he says, do you think these bones can live? Can these bones live? And of course, nobody knows except God. And that's what Ezekiel says. It says, Lord God, only you know. Now, I look at this as, you know, Ezekiel being human is limited by his own capacities. No, we don't know what can happen. You know, we, we have so much uh, leeway, so much ability to get it so far. But the thing is, Ezekiel is dependent upon God uh, to carry through something that only God can do. And, and I see that as in our lives, is that we limit ourselves, but God is limitless. And to me, this is what he's saying. Ezekiel said, you know, God, I don't know, but you do. You know, you are all powerful. And so as Ezekiel is, is seeing this vision of these bones, and the question comes to him from God, can these bones live? Ezekiel is, you know, well, Lord, I don't know, but you know. And then it goes on. And God says to Ezekiel, prophesy concerning these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now that may seem odd that God is telling Ezekiel to preach or to prophesy to these bones and tell them, you know, listen bones, heads up, God has something in store for you, something spectacular, something supernatural. Then it says, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. He goes to verse 5. This is what the Lord God says to these bones. And when it says the Lord God says, basically what he's saying is God, our Lord, Lord, emphasizing the superiority of God himself. 
uh, all-knowing, all-wise. It says, I will cause breath to enter you and you will live. Now think about that. How impossible to us, these dry, naked, dead uh, bones, and God is saying, I will cause you to live. No shape, no form, anything. But God is saying, I'm going to lift you up and I'm going to cause life to become anew again. It says, I will cause breath to enter you and you will live. I will put tendons on you and make flesh grow on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you so that you come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So here we are, I have Ezekiel in his vision and God's telling him what he's going to do to these bones. And, and God is very specific. And you know, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, an outline of, of uh, a human body. You, you know, you've got your, your, your bones. Then it talks about your uh, tendons, things that hold your muscle and bones together. Uh, and then your skin covering the outside. God is basically starting, not from scratch, because the bones are here, but God is telling, <clears throat> excuse me, is telling that, you know, watch what happens. A miracle is about to be performed here. I'm going to take these dry, brittle bones, and I'm going to make something real out of it, live out of it. So I will put breath in you so that you will come to life. And he's talking to the bones but you know, also he is talking to us as individuals. We walk around in our bodies and we we breathe and, and everything like that. But you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of people that are dead, just like these dry bones. They don't have the life of Christ within them. And to me, that's what Ezekiel is basically saying is that until God breathes his spirit into us, we are just so much bone and skin walking around. We are not truly alive yet. And so God is telling Ezekiel that, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to restore these, these bones into flesh and blood. And I'm going to breathe life into them. And then you will know that I am the Lord. And he's talk, not only talking about Ezekiel will know, but these restored bodies will know, as well as we, as we read this, know that God can do anything. And so what he's looking at here is a revival, a restoration of life of something long dead. Now, this is symbolic, and we'll get more to that later, of the Israel nation. Now, you got to remember, uh, the northern kingdom had been put into exile uh, by the Assyrians. And then about 150 years later, the Babylonians conquered the southern kingdom, which is what Ezekiel came from, and here they are in exile too. So these bones represent the past Israelites that have gone on before. They have, you know, perished because of the sin in their life. And God is saying, you know, but there's hope. There's hope. As, as desolate as it may seem, there is still hope for you to you know, come back to me to recover. And so what God is preparing Ezekiel to see is not only his power, but as he does this, proclaiming that, you know, he is your Lord, he is your God. And so as Ezekiel prepares to this, as he's preaching or prophesying to these bones, Things start to happen. 
The next part is the presentation. So we've got a revival starting here. Uh, I mean, we're talking a true revival of something dead and gone, but starting to spring to life. And we need to realize that, you know, we need to regenerate our lives into a, a, a revival of ourselves to get the word of God out to those around us who need it. Everybody needs the Lord. And so as we look at this, this is the beginning of a revival or a restoration of not only the, the former uh, lives of, of those Israelites that have passed on, but also a promise to us. All right, the next part is the presentation. Verses 7 through 10 of chapter 37. Ezekiel's talking. So I prophesied I had been commanded. And while I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. As I looked, tendons appeared on them. Flesh grew and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Verse 9 and 10. He, God, said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man. Say to it, this is what the Lord God says. Breath, come from the four winds and breathe into these slain so they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. The breath entered them and they came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. So, as Ezekiel is prophesying, he said, while well, I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. How, <coughs> excuse me, how awesome, even though a vision, this would be to hear, as he's prophesying, as Ezekiel prophesying, the bones start to move, start to connect. And it wasn't just a disoriented connection. It was you know, uh, fingers to wrist, wrist to arm, arm to shoulder. They were coming together as a should be, as a skeleton should be. And so these bones are starting to rattle. Uh, you know, <laughs> what an awesome sound that would be. And you got to remember, we're talking about hundreds, if not thousands of bones. And the noise that this product presented in Ezekiel's mind. So they started rattling, and they started coming together. And it says, as I looked, tendons appeared. And so basically what we're looking at is the beginning, the bones, and then the tendons, and then flesh, and then skin uh, starting to develop. Uh, you know, we could... I, I can just picture my mind a reverse of decompo decomposing body building back up to a human form. And and this is what uh, Ezekiel was seeing. And it says, as I look, the tendons appeared and flesh grew and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. There was no life. The body they have been reconstructed. The body had been made almost complete, but they weren't alive. There was no breath in them. You think back to where in Genesis, to where God breathed life into Adam. Now he made Adam from scratch. So this wasn't a, 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 a creation is a restoration, like I said before, a revival of these past people. So there's no breath in them. But then, verse 9, he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Say to it, this is what the Lord God says, 
breath come from the four winds and breathe into these slain so that they may have the, so they may live. And when we're talking about breath here, it's all it's a sign of also uh, it can be interpreted the four winds. Uh, it can be interpreted uh, several different ways, but it's the Holy Spirit coming upon these people. And so what we're looking at here is not only a restoration of, of life, but also a spiritual restoration. The Holy Spirit bringing more than just visible life, breath to these people, but a spiritual restoration of God's people at this time to you know, these to these people coming to be. And so he's telling, he says, breath, you know, fill them. Holy Spirit, enter these bodies, fill them, bring them to life. And you know, that's the way it is today. God gives us life through the Holy Spirit, through our belief in Jesus Christ. We are not truly alive till we know Christ is our personal Lord and Savior. He gives us life. He is the breath of life. And so as these bones are coming together and, and forming and skin and everything's coming across, they are inanimate objects. But then all of a sudden, God's spirit comes upon them. And verse 10 says, So I prophesy as he commanded me, the breath entered them and they came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. What an awesome sight that must have been to see these dry, brittle bones been bleached by the sun, no telling how long they've been there, representing generations of deceased Israelites. And now all of a sudden, they are made complete they're standing up, they are breathing, they have been restored by the Holy Spirit through the power of God. And so as, as we look at this, you know, it, uh, it, it must have been mind boggling uh, to, to Ezekiel, but yet it's just another example of the power of God being able to do what he wants done. And he's, he's able to take these bodies and we don't know, you know, what purpose will be used for these later, but the thing is they are available now to do his will. And, and that's like us. When we turn ourselves over to the Lord and his spirit comes within us, we have made ourselves available to be used by God any way he sees fit. The next part is the promise, 11 through 14. Then he said to me, God said to Ezekiel, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Look how they say, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the Lord God says. I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them, my people, and lead you into the land of Israel. Verse 13, you will know that I am the Lord, my people, when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it. This is the declaration of the Lord. So God says to Ezekiel, this is the whole house of Israel. So what God is telling Ezekiel is that 
These bones represent both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. These are the ones that have gone on before that have uh, died uh, because of their uh, turning away from me. This represents the whole house of Israel. Not just the northern kingdom, not just the southern, but every all of them. And it says, and the, since this is the whole house of Israel, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are cut off. Think about it when, when the northern kingdom was taken away and the southern kingdom remained. The northern kingdom, uh, over time, I mean over 150 years in captivity, had to lose all hope. And this is what he's saying. Our hope has perished. And this, this you know, this is the, the generations of Israelites saying, we've been in exile so long, we have no hope. And then 150 years after the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom sees what has happened to the northern kingdom, and they have no hope. You know, I'm sure they're crying out, God, where are you? What hope do we have when we look at the northern kingdom and they've been in captivity for over 150 years and they still are? And so our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. They, they're forlorn. They're, they're lost. They're saying there is no hope for us. We are cut off. Cut off from what? Cut off from God. But God has an answer for them. Verse 12 says, therefore prophesy to them. This is what the Lord God says. I will open your graves and bring you up from them, my people, and lead you into the land of Israel. God is holding out hope, not only to these restored bodies, but to the total nation of Israel saying, I have not forgotten you. I have not forsaken you. There is a time coming when I will bring you out of your destitute, of your imprisonment, and restore you to the land that I promised your ancestors centuries before. So I will lead you into the land of Israel. And we're talking about total Israel, not a divided country, but a total Israel. And we're talking about a united Israel, not only in name, but in spirit. It says, you will know that I am the Lord, my people, when I open your graves and bring you up from them. And so God is saying, just like these bones, I'm going to restore you. I'm going to restore you, not only to Israel, but to the, the, the land of Israel, to your God-given nation that I promised you but I'm going to restore our relationship between you and me. He says, I will bring you up from them and I will put my spirit in you again. God's spirit coming to these people, restoring their relationship between God and the Jewish nation. And you will live and I will settle you in your own land. God's promising that there's going to come a time and it's still in the future. What Ezekiel is, is quoting here is toward the end times. Revelations, whatever you want to call it, but toward the end time of you know God's time, the earth time here, this is yet to come. Yes, the nation of Israel is established. But the thing is, he's talking about in the future when there will be peace and harmony because of God here on earth. It says, then you will know that I am the Lord. What I have, what I'm doing, what I'm going to do is to let you know that it's me, your God, and that I'm capable of doing this. And, and 
so neat. It says, so that you will know that I am the Lord. God does stuff for us in our lives all the time so that we will know that he is our Lord. We just need to realize it. There's no coincidence or happenstance when it comes, you know, to things concerning God. It's a planned out thing. God doesn't leave anything to circumstances or luck. God has a plan for each and every one of us. In fact, in, in, in Psalms, it talks about how he knew us before we were even born. He knew us when we were being knitted in our womb. He knows us then. He knows our future at that time. Uh, you know, we are not far from God when we are a child of his. He's always there. And it says, I have spoken and I will do it. This is a promise God has given Ezekiel. He's given us that what I have said I'm going to do, I'm going to do. It's that simple. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. You know, there used to be a years ago, said, honk if you love Jesus. Well, you know, I love Jesus. I don't need to honk. I need to live my life for him. And, you know, when God says he's going to do something, that is a promise that he has never gone back on. I don't know why I put that horn thing in there. Forget it. Uh, but this is the declaration of the Lord, it says. This is the declaration. This is God's promise to us that there's going to come a time when Israel will be home in their own land and there will be peace and my people will be reunited together and they will be one, not only as a nation, but as a spirit. And we have that opportunity to enjoy that, maybe not so much to live in Israel or anything, but to be united with God in spirit and in faith. Because what he has promised here, restoration, a revival in our lives, it applies to us too. And so as Ezekiel is, is looking at this vision and seeing what God is doing and is going to do, it gives us hope and faith that we are not deserted, that he has not left us alone, but that the best is yet to come. And that's God's promise. And that's important. There's nothing more important than keeping your word to somebody. And God, time and time again, has proved that his word is valid and that we can depend upon that. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, I just appreciate all the study we've had of Ezekiel. Dear God, that all through the trials and tribulations of him and his people, he always held out hope. That there is always hope, a light at the end of the tunnel. And that through faith, we can accomplish this through the power of God through his son, Jesus Christ. Help us, dear God, to be dependent upon the Lord. Help us, dear Lord, to do your will. And dear God, we just give you praise. And we look forward to living our lives for you, dear Lord, that we just pray that it'll be a pleasing life to you. And we just give you praise, God, and we love you. Amen. Next week, we start Daniel. We're looking at Daniel 1, verses 8 through 21. Integrity established. Integrity established. Daniel 1, 8 through 21. I hope you've enjoyed Ezekiel. I look forward to getting into Daniel. And uh, hopefully... We'll learn more about these two, or Daniel, than 
if you've ever done before. I'm excited and hope you are too. You have a good week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God loves you and so do I. Bye-bye.